We are about a week removed from the conclusion of the RNC, and I'm just trying to, and especially, it works well to go ahead and cast our minds back and really remember what stuck out, okay? What was highlighted during that multi-day event? What was the message that the Republican Party wanted to put out ahead of the 2024 election? And whether or not that resonated with their voting base? And I'll just go ahead and say it incredibly short and succinctly. This is a party that still very much detests its base, very much wants to be establishment, but it has been dragged to relevance, kicking and screaming by one man and one message. And that message and that man resonates with the public and resonates with the people that the Republican Party cannot stand at all and that has always been a problem with any mainstream conservative party as somebody who is in fact a lifelong conservative has never really dabbled in left-leaning politics okay to quote razor fist my politics come with german subtitles okay i'm the hardest of the hard line on a lot of issues a couple of things you know i might be a little bit more temperate on but all in all i'm about as conservative as they come and while I might be exclusionary when it comes to who I would endorse, who I would want to bring into the party, I have a different standard than what the GOP and all of their sycophants would want to see carry on this party past 2028 because I see a big old loggerhead coming up there on the horizon because after Trump, what does this party do? Okay, because MAGA is the obvious message. Populism is the cause de jour to make the Republican Party more than it actually is. To make it the grand old party, not the geriatric old party, not the stalking neocon party, okay, to actually turn this into a viable right-wing movement that has a legitimate future, something that we haven't seen in a very long time. But yes, it's very funny to take a look back at the speakers over the past week or so, and well, some of the highlights that were up there, and one that immediately sticks out in my mind, not for the content of her speech, but when Nikki Haley came up on stage and President Trump asked me to speak at this convention, and you can see Trump up there on the balcony, okay, where he's just gonna go ahead and mouth this along, okay, yeah, and he asked me to speak tonight, and then, yeah, they'll do the split screen here real quickly, and cut over, and it's like, actually, she wanted to speak okay here we go here we go she wanted to speak okay i didn't ask her to speak she wanted to be here but who invited her well of course the rnc because as much as they like the popularity that trump has brought them at the end of the day i'm gonna play identity politics as much as the democrats why do you think they rallied behind nikki haley like for christ's sakes do you think that she's this great statesman she got drummed out of her home state south carolina south carolinans can't stand this broad but she's brown she's a woman okay and we need to do that we need to nominate somebody like that so that the democrats don't think they were racists or sexists what about ron d santis okay i came back up on stage i made sure that i had my speech written out it had the appropriate length to it it had the appropriate lifts so i could get up on stage and read it from the teleprompters and it also had a really good zinger a really good zinger that placates to the golden corral 430 brigade ron DeSantis with the line of the night america cannot afford for more years of a weekend at bernie's presidency you get it because biden is barely cognizant everybody clap holy shit like yeah that's gonna end up being the line of the night when the rest of the lineup Looks like Nikki Haley. Looks like Mike Pompeo. Looks like Vivek Ramaswamy, who I like, generally speaking, and I think that he could end up inheriting a mega mantle. It's just, I didn't hear anything about his speech at all whatsoever. I'm sure it was well delivered because he is a quite the linguist. It's just, there's nothing coming out of it, okay? That was generally the tone and tenor of the RNC. Incredibly and totally forgettable and had stupid partisan shills and not try to make it all about them. Try to make it seem like Trump was low energy days after getting shot. This would have been one of the more forgettable RNCs, if we're being completely honest. Trump fell asleep at the RNC on the first night he just got there. All right. If you don't know the context behind this clip, um, there's a prayer going on right there. And Trump has closed his eyes uh, to take part in said prayer. But, you know, having faith and belief in anything other than big daddy government isn't really something that you see from leftist hacks. Yeah, you have that, and then you had Mark Hamill talking Trump's ear guard after, of course, getting shot. 
which would have been the standard fare. It wasn't until the final night, okay, and I want to play this back one more time because it's still my favorite thing. And it was definitely the highlight, just going to show you. And it was definitely, if you just go ahead and rank all of the speeches based on crowd reaction, it got the biggest reaction. And it did this one thing that the Republican Party I thought was absolutely allergic to at this point in time. It was fun, okay? So for all the people, oh, it's just, oh, America has gone full idiocracy. No, no, no. If you want to go ahead and continue to play stuffy politics where everybody comes up to the stage like the stupid union leader and just drone on for ages talking about taxes, foreign country policy, all of the stuff that resonates with precisely zero people, you go ahead and continue to do that. You go ahead, you book out whatever hotel banquet room you can possibly find and dozens of people will turn out for the next event. But if you want eyeballs on your event, if you want different disaffected people to check in with your message you gotta do some unconventional stuff so yeah is a hulk hogan gonna be an emissary for the trump campaign absolutely not are you gonna get a cabinet position should he be the press secretary yes will he be the press secretary absolutely not this was just a meme this was something fun and this was something memorable okay because this is something that millions of people have watched in comparison to, oh, Carrie Lake delivered one hell of a good speech where she talked about being a mama bear. Oh, shut up. This is so much more fantastic. And I like Carrie Lake, for Christ's sake. What happened last week when they took a shot hell at my yeah, hero? Brother. Yeah. And they tried to kill the next president, president of the United, United States. States brother. Enough was enough. And I said, let trump a -mania. Run wild, brother! Let Trumpomania rule again! Let Trumpomania make America great again! I love it. I still love it. I'm going to love it for years to come. And that is something that is going to live on. And you know what? That energizes people because, yeah, you check out every comment section, okay? Fun-loving Republicans, even some moderate leftists that are still out there is like, you know what? Still pretty cool that, you know, Hulkster was out there. Okay, he went full Hulk Hogan mode. You know, it even resonated when he had the likes of Ben Shapiro try to break it down in 500 words. Like, for Christ's sakes, bro. How could you take one of the coolest moments in American history and completely dorkify it? Here's the thing, okay? The Republican Party's never going to st shake the stigma of being for losers when you end up with stuff like this, okay? Here you have anti-fun Matt Walsh talking about Amber Rose delivering a five-minute speech on day one. And you know me, okay? I'm pretty hard on these hoes out here in these streets, okay? And Amber Rose, 304 until she's a dead in the ground, okay? Only fans account, she's got all of the hallmarks. But here's the thing, man, okay? The five-minute speech on day one of the RNC, okay? It's a five-minute speech from somebody who is actually a community organizer, who is somebody who has a history of mobilizing the youth. It's not for a message, okay? It's not for something that I am ever going to support, okay? Because she's the founder of the Slut Walk. And if she's just trying to get in where she thinks that she can fit in, if this is another one of those wrap yourself in the Bible type situations, trying to be a reformed hoe, in order to find a new home that's one thing but if she's talking to some people that are out there okay she's talking to some friend yeah some friends some fans some admirers that are out there that are looking to go down the path of amber rose okay but if she's talking about how she's made some changes or just simply espousing some changes if by her getting up on that rnc stage if she ends up saving a life if she saves one young woman from getting up on a pole from just simply fast tracking not taking the same route that led Amber Rose to get a goofy ass head tattoo, I would consider that a W because there was nobody that else that was up there that would end up building those bridges. Do you think Franklin Graham's dusty old ass is going to be peeling to anybody under the age of 75? No. What about state representative? I can't see my feet. Okay. Trying to raise his public profile by going woke mind virus. Oh, we need to stop the radical left. You think his ragu chugging ass is going to somehow reach the youth? Absolutely not. So yeah, good on her. Good on her for getting up there, having an articulate speech, getting to the point, just going, I have no political aspirations. I don't want to be president one day. I just simply know that, you know, my life choices have taken me down certain paths and 
There's one party that has gone completely off the deep end, and there's another party that is just for sensible policies and sensible decisions, and one that I think is far more conducive to family life. Fantastic! It's the voice of your average person that's out there. You might hold yourself to better standards. I know I definitely do, and like I've said before, okay? And I've been critical of Amber Rose and her ilk, justifiably so. But I'm not out here trying to gatekeep somebody out of the club just to show how pure and virtuous I am like stupid ass Matt Walsh the R oh, the RNC gives a primetime speaking slot to a pro-abortion feminist and self-proclaimed slut with a face tattoo whose only claim to fame is having sex with rappers truly an embarrassment not a single voter will be mobilized by this person just another brain dead take by Matt Walsh because if we're being completely honest okay who has brought more people to the Republican Party, Matt Walsh or Amber Rose. And I don't know who Linda Catalina was, I just seen, this was the post that I seen that really instigated, okay? Me talking about Matt Walsh here was, yeah, people like me hated Republicans like Matt Walsh until Donald J. Trump. Well, Donald Trump, J. Trump. And she represents more than 30% of the voting bloc that would have never casted a vote for a Republican if it wasn't for Trump. She's not there to sell her lifestyle. She's showing you her journey. Yeah, exactly. You can learn from her mistakes. That's fine. The Republican Party's not trying to put her on. They're not trying to put her in a Congress seat or anything like that. They're not trying to make her the right version of AOC. Okay, this is not going to happen. But yeah, we also have to play a game of realism. There are hoes out there. Hoes have votes, regrettably. And if all they've been fed by the media generations at this point is that the Republicans are just those stuffy shirt assholes that are never going to accept you for who you are. Just vote blue no matter who. Just go out there be a default Democrat. Because look, the, uh, the types of Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, the Daily Wire types, okay, those are Republicans, okay? Those stuffy white guys, white guys, don't want you there unless you just staple your leg shut until marriage, say 25 Hail Marys, know at least 15 Reagan quotes. If you don't have any of that stuff, we don't want you around here. But if Matt Walsh wants to be the arbiter of morality, if he wants to be the gatekeeper of Republicanism, I mean, we should take a look at um, his previous endorsement of a certain candidate. I get the Trump supporters uh, like him because he's a pathetic, whiny, thin-skinned narciss narcissist. Actually, no, I still don't get it if trump supporters want to come back to reality after making fools of themselves for the past two months i will embrace and forgive them the real quandary is this uh, what do trump supporters lack more intelligence self-respect or principles i have now been called politically correct and part of the establishment by trump supporters dear lord these people are delusional donald trump is just a repulsive cretin doing what repulsive cretins do his supporters are real culprits in this sad pathetic tale. So far, my policy proposal to deport Trump supporters is really resonating with voters. Maybe I should run for office on this platform. And wait, there's more. So far, my policy proposal to deport Trump supporters. Oh, we're reposting that one. Uh, the theory that all of the Trump supporters drink Mountain Dew and think professional wrestling is real. It's coming from a guy who's going to ultimately do a heel turn. But anyways, uh, it's, it's not whether Trump will lose his supporters. It's whether he can gain any at this point answer to that is no he's so finished and this was before 2016 huh uh do you think that trump supporters had jobs and kids maybe they wouldn't be so eager to destroy the country hilarious and what's that amber rose has kids right and she's a trump and you're a hypocrite working for the daily okay cool uh maybe i should say it like trump i won't call trump supporters fools because uh that would be bad but many people have called them fools well that's kind of funny that's the only one that i can actually think of as a joke but then of course you know prominent never trump or prior to 2016 he just uh magically had you know he, he had an about face and come to Jesus moment about this, right? But to conservative disciples, you are embarrassing conservatism and yourself. He is the arbiter, okay, of what it means to be a conservative in the United States, even though that's what he thinks of you. But why is it he doesn't want to talk about what went on during the RNC? Why isn't it that he ever wants to denounce the Republican Party, okay? If he wants to shake that stigma of being an establishment hack, why not just, you know, call out all of these uh, Christian conservative values, but then at the same time, grinder traffic completely and totally spiking in Milwaukee during the week of the RNC. And yeah, 
as Oren McIntyre points out that, yeah, trust me, the right wing is well aware of the fact that the GOP is gay. Nothing has ever been more true than that because there are a lot of right-leaning people, right-wing people, conservative people that are out there. And we're just holding our nose because the movement and the message is embodied by one person right now. And they just happen to be running on the GOP ticket. If there were more palatable, if there were more appreciated, if there were more resonating messages elsewhere, that's where we would go. We are are not the partisan hacks that are out there. That's the Matt Walsh types. That's the Daily Wire types. And if you want to go hang around with them, that's fine. They probably got a couple of beds or beard creams to sell you. Well, us over here, yeah, we got principles. We've got standards. We've got some fun to have. So go ahead and make your choice. Just as long as you're being honest and true to yourself, we'll welcome you over on this side of the aisle. But if those principles and values are for sale, well, you can just go ahead and sign up and take part in the next RNC. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.